I am Sugata and you are on Dad Space. Well, the Hole in the Wall project started in, uh, really started in 1988. And it started with a paper that I presented in a conference in Goa in India, where I had suggested that if you leave a computer with children, then over a period of time, the brighter children will use the computer. This is what I thought in those days. And that therefore, this could be a method by which we can find out who the brighter children are. In 1999, I was working for NIIT Limited, which is a very large uh, private education company in India. I was their uh, chief scientist at that time. And I got the opportunity to actually carry out this experiment to see what would happen if a computer was left in a public space for unsupervised use by children. And uh, that's how Hole in the Wall started. And what we found was that it invariably leads to automatic computer literacy. Children, groups of children can learn to teach themselves to use a computer and to use the internet on their own, irrespective of who or where they are. I was utterly astonished by the fact that there was any relationship. I saw the film before I knew anything about this relationship. And the next day morning when I came into my office, I got an email which uh, had a newspaper clipping in it where Vikas Swaroop, the man who wrote this book called Q and A, from which Slumdog Millionaire was made, had actually named me and said I was inspired by uh, the hole in the wall experiment. So I was astonished. I didn't know the writer of Slumdog Millionaire or Q&A all that well. I wrote to Vikas and I said, thank you very much for this. And he wrote back immediately saying, you know, I'm, I'm very taken with that work. And so what are you doing now? So I described to him what I was doing now in India and uh, in the UK. And, um, uh, and we had this nice uh, conversation over the email. So that's how it happened. And then uh, I thought back to myself, I thought back about Slumdog and I realized uh, where that influence was because he was talking about circumstantial learning by children. I was talking about unsupervised learning by children. So the theme actually was the same, although I would have never imagined it in, in the sense in which uh, Vikas wrote his, uh, his story. And our mails ended, in fact, with my suggestion to Vikas to say, what I would have really, really liked to see is a slumdog Nobel laureate. Uh, and maybe that can happen. I loved the film. I, I thought it was very nice. I, I think the portrayal of Bombay was uh, done very well. I know that in India, many people are a little annoyed. But then uh, Bombay is like that. And I think uh, it's, been, it's been shown uh, very, very accurately. The story itself is a stretch, but then, I mean, that's, that's the, 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 the poetic license, if you, if you like. Well, no, certainly not. You know, I, I, I'm a social scientist uh, and a scientist, so I'm interested in questions and how to answer them. Um, if those answers are of use to somebody, if it inspires somebody, naturally it makes me feel very happy, but that is not the objective. Um, who wants to be a millionaire? Yes, I, I, I watch it uh, quite often and uh, you know, they're, they're quite magnetic these shows. So, so if, you, if you bump into, the, the, uh, into that kind of a show on one on the channel, uh, you, you tend to stay on it uh, if, if there's a, you know, an interesting question on the screen or whatever. In fact, uh, what uh, I, I think I may not have discussed with anyone is that what I'm doing now, um, both uh, in the UK and in India, is to have similar interfaces but use questions taken from the GCSE and to try to see if children will try to answer those questions on their own and in the process actually revise the exam for themselves. There are two, two offerings that are really waiting to be made and I'm working on both of those here in Newcastle. One is a self-organized learning environment, an environment which is managed by children uh, in a highly visible non-school location, such as a playground or a public space, um, which is used by the children for entertainment and education in an absolutely seamless way, so that they don't actually see where the education ends and where the entertainment begins, etc. Uh, I have, I have a, a design for, 
for how such a facility will work. I'm building, I built 10 of them in Hyderabad, in India. And I'm building the 11th, which is a new model, which will be completely solar powered and the broadband will come in wirelessly. So it's kind of, you know, self-contained. Um, that's, that will, I think, be one offering. And I think it will allow, it, it will cause immediate and visible change in children, particularly in their performance in examinations. The other offering is remote presence, which I am uh, doing on an experimental basis from, from Newcastle. So I, you could have an English grandmother read out a fairy tale to children in India over full-size Skype projections for virtually free of cost and cause incredible change in their English over a very short period of time. And I think that it will very quickly become an educational offering in both directions. There will be teachers out of India teaching inside other countries, teachers out of the UK teaching in other countries and so on. That's one form of remote presence. The final form of remote presence that I intend to work on are remotely operated vehicles. Um, sounds very sci-fi, but I have a case for it. They already exist for entertainment and for industry. You have undersea remotely operated vehicles. You have in outer space, you know, like the Mars landers, remotely operated vehicles. The army uses remotely operated bomb disposal units. Mm, that sort of thing. Remotely operated aeroplanes. Why can't we have a remotely operated teacher? It will have a head. It will have a screen for a face on which you'll see a real teacher's face. It will be able to walk up and down or, or roll up and down an aisle. Uh, it can talk to students in real time. It's controlled over the internet. It enables teachers to go where they otherwise don't want to. And, and I, I have a contention that there are and there always will be places on this planet where for whatever reason, good teachers will not want to go physically. So here are the two offerings. If you simply can't have teachers, a self-organized learning environment that tries to eliminate the need for the teacher. If you can send a teacher over the internet, two ways to do it. Send her as a two-dimensional image, full life size, or send her physically as a remotely operated vehicle. I think a combination of this is what the future of educational technology should look like.